All right, future bond mavens, today we're jumping into the world of bond price risk and the various measures used to understand how sensitive a bond's price is to changes in interest rates. Now, if you've ever wondered how a 1% change in interest rates could affect the price of your bond, or if you've heard terms like modified duration or price value of a basis point, PVBP, and thought, what on earth does that mean? You're in the right place. So let's roll up our sleeves and break these concepts down, one step at a time. First up, we've got Macaulay duration. Think of Macaulay duration as the center of gravity for a bond's cash flows. It's a measure of the weighted average time until you receive all of a bond's cash flows, coupons and principal. But why does this matter? Well, Macaulay duration gives you a rough idea of how long it takes to get your money back from a bond, considering the time value of money. The formula might sound a bit intimidating, but it's actually pretty logical. You take the present value of each cash flow, divide it by the bond's current price, and multiply it by the time until each cash flow occurs. It's like saying, how much weight does each payment carry based on when it arrives? Let's say you're holding a five-year bond with a 4% annual coupon. If the Macaulay duration is four years, it means it will take approximately four years to recover the bond's price through its cash flows adjusted for the time value of money. All right, now let's take things up a notch with modified duration. This is the big one when it comes to understanding a bond's sensitivity to interest rate changes. Unlike Macaulay duration, modified duration tells you the percentage change in a bond's price for a 1% change in interest rates. It's more direct and actionable, especially when you're making investment decisions. Modified duration adjusts Macaulay duration by accounting for the bond's yield. The formula goes like this. Now, let's talk about annualized modified duration. To make this measure more practical, especially for bonds with semi-annual or quarterly coupon payments, we often annualize modified duration. This gives you a better sense of how sensitive a bond is to interest rate changes over a full year. Suppose you have a bond with a Macaulay duration of five years, a YTM of 3%, and it pays semi-annual coupons. The modified duration would adjust Macaulay duration based on the yield and provide a more precise measure of how much the bond's price will change if interest rates move up or down by 1%. Approximate modified duration when things get complicated. Now, what if you're dealing with a bond where calculating Macaulay duration is tricky or impractical due to complexity or default risk? Enter approximate modified duration, a handy alternative for estimating price sensitivity. This method involves calculating the bond's price for slight increases and decreases in yield and using these prices to estimate the slope of the tangent to the bond's price yield curve. The formula looks like this. Imagine a bond priced at $100, present value zero, with a yield change of 0.5%. If the price rises to $101 when the yield decreases, PV minus, and falls to $99.05 when the yield increases, PV plus, the approximate modified duration would give you a snapshot of the bond's sensitivity to interest rate changes. Next, let's talk about money duration, also known as dollar duration. If modified duration tells you the percentage change in a bond's price for a 1% change in interest rates, Money duration translates that into actual currency terms. Multiply the annualized modified duration by the bond's full price is like this. This is the formula for estimating the percentage change in the full price of the bond. 
If a bond has an annualized modified duration of seven and a full price of $105, the money duration would be $735. This means that for every 1% change in yield, the bond's price would change by about $7.35. This gives you a clear picture of the monetary impact of yield changes on your bond investment. Now let's get into the price value of a basis point, PVBP. This measure takes sensitivity a step further by estimating the change in a bond's full price for a one basis point change, 0.01% in its yield to maturity. Calculate the difference in the bond's full price when the yield decreases and increases by one basis point and divide by two. If a bond's price is $100.05 when the yield decreases by one basis point and $99.95 when the yield increases by one basis point, the PVBP would be five cents. This tells you that a 0.01% change in yield affects the bond's price by about five cents. It's like fine tuning your sensitivity analysis to the smallest change in rates. Let's quickly touch on some special cases where duration measures behave a bit differently. Zero coupon bonds. Since they only have one cash flow at maturity, the Macaulay duration equals the time to maturity. The modified duration is simply the time to maturity divided by one plus the yield. Perpetual bonds pay coupons indefinitely and never mature. The Macaulay duration formula becomes 1 plus R divided by R, where R is the yield. Floating rate notes. Because their interest rates adjust with market rates, their duration is short, essentially limited to the time until the next rate reset. It minimizes interest rate risk between resets. All right, now we're getting into the nitty gritty of duration, a key concept in bond investing that's all about measuring a bond's sensitivity to interest rate changes. Now, you might think duration is just one number that tells you everything you need to know about interest rate risk, but there's a bit more to it. Duration is like a compass for bond investors. It points you in the right direction by showing you how a bond will react to changes in interest rates. So let's dive into the key properties of duration and see what makes this concept tick. Let's start with the four key factors that influence Macaulay duration and related measures like modified duration. Think of these factors as the ingredients in a recipe that determines how sensitive a bond is to interest rate changes. Coupon rate, C. The lower the coupon rate, the higher the bond's duration. Why? Because with a lower coupon rate, more weight is placed on that final maturity payment. It's like having a meal where the main course is way bigger than the appetizers. You're waiting longer for the big payoff. Yield to maturity. Similarly, a lower yield to maturity increases duration. When YTM is low, the present value of future cash flows is higher, which stretches out the average time to get your money back. Think of it like this. With a lower YTM, each dollar in the future counts more, making the bond more sensitive to rate changes. Time to maturity. The longer the time to maturity, the higher the duration, especially for bonds trading at par or a premium. It's like waiting for a bus. The further away it is, the more anxious you are about when it will arrive. Fraction of the coupon period elapsed. Bonds also have duration that changes within each coupon period. If you're closer to the coupon payment date, 
meaning less of the period has elapsed. The bond's duration is higher. It's like waiting for payday. The closer you are, the more you're focused on it. Now, let's break down how these factors affect duration. Bonds with lower coupon rates and lower yields to maturity have higher duration and therefore higher interest rate risk. Why? Because they place a larger weight on the final maturity payment. This makes them more sensitive to interest rate changes like a boat that's more likely to tip over when the waves rates get choppy. Generally, the longer the maturity, the higher the duration. However, there's a twist. This is particularly true for bonds trading at par or a premium. For discount bonds, duration can actually reach a peak at very long maturities and then start to decrease. Imagine a roller coaster climbing up. At some point, it starts to level off and then drops. Same idea here with duration. Sawtooth pattern for duration over time. As time passes within a coupon period, a bond's duration decreases until a coupon payment is made. Then, after the payment, the duration jumps back up slightly. This creates a sawtooth pattern. It's like walking down a staircase and then stepping back up a bit with each new payment. All right, let's connect some dots here. How do Macaulay duration and time to maturity play off each other? Lower coupon bonds versus higher coupon bonds. Lower coupon bonds have higher duration compared to higher coupon bonds. Why? Because with lower coupons, you're getting less of your cash flows up front, making the bond more sensitive to interest rate changes. It's like having more money tied up in a long-term investment versus a series of quicker, smaller payouts. Impact of yield to maturity. Lower yields increase duration because they extend the weighted average time to get your money back. The less interest you're earning up front, the longer it takes for your investment to pay off in duration terms. Longer time to maturity means higher duration. Generally speaking, longer maturities mean higher durations. More time means more uncertainty, and more uncertainty means more risk. It's like lending money to a friend. The longer you let them keep it, the more nervous you might get about getting paid back. Now, let's explore how duration behaves differently, depending on whether a bond is trading at par, premium, or discount. For premium and par bonds, the duration is typically less than the ratio of 1 plus R divided by R, where R represents the yield. As the bond's time to maturity increases, its duration also grows, signifying greater interest rate risk over time. This makes sense because with a higher coupon or par bond, more of the value is coming back to you sooner in the form of interest payments, so your duration increases but stays below a certain cap. However, discount bonds show a unique pattern. Here's where it gets interesting. For long-term discount bonds, the duration can actually exceed 1 plus R, divided by R initially, but it reaches a peak and then starts to decline. This indicates that as these long-dated discount bonds mature, their sensitivity to interest rate changes decreases, reducing the interest rate risk. It's like climbing a hill where you think it's going to go on forever, but suddenly you're over the peak and starting to go downhill. This phenomenon highlights how bond duration behaves differently depending on whether the bond is trading at a premium, par, or discount. And there you have it, folks. Understanding the properties of duration is crucial for managing interest rate risks in your bond portfolio. Whether you're dealing with low coupon, low yield, or long maturity bonds, knowing how duration behaves helps you navigate the ups and downs of the market. By mastering modified duration, 
approximate modified duration, money duration, and PVBP, you gain a comprehensive toolkit for assessing and managing the price risk of bonds. Whether you're evaluating the impact of interest rate changes or fine-tuning your bond portfolio, these measures are key to making informed decisions. Keep practicing these concepts, you know, stay sharp, and soon you'll be navigating the bond market like a pro. Until next time, keep those calculators handy and your minds even sharper.